Waiting around for you to call back Pacing around my room and my dad Crazy, crazy I want you to know what you have against me The city is not the place for us to be We used to have each other's playlists No, no we Used to be each other's best friends Yeah And now we go our separate pathways But your heart's still in because I got here a long time ago and I've just been laying on the bed not doing anything serious but I do want to give you guys a little bit of a tour of my room it's small but also a big upgrade in terms of space a little bit not as much storage and I'm living alone this time around so that's gonna be interesting and I'm excited for all the content that I can film in here and just documenting my experience Okay, remember how I said that I've been here for a while and I've just been laying doing nothing. My dad bought me this food in the morning on the way here. Literally, I could have eaten it earlier, but I've just been laying resting, I guess. So there's our dinner, which was supposed to be our breakfast slash lunch, or more like brunch. I'm just gonna eat that. It's a crunch burger. Dude, wait a second. There's more sauce in here. I don't understand why they put so much sauce. My dad also got a meal, but that's a lot of sauce for two people. Anyways, it's a crunch burger, original recipe chicken, as you can see back there. Two crunch wings, I think they're called, and small chips. And then it also came with a Pepsi. Also, the desk is a mess. But I'm gonna watch some YouTube 
and eat and then maybe get to unpacking organizing all the stuff Why is it spicy? Guess what time it is? 9.20 p.m. And mind you, the last time I saw you, I was eating and that was around like five-ish, six-ish. What have I been doing that whole time? Well, I was online window shopping while listening to love songs because why not? I'm starting to think these are procrastination tactics, so we're gonna get on with the work. First things first, I'm gonna clean the entire room. So we'll start by sweeping and then wiping down counter spaces and stuff like that. Like the desk and the wardrobe shovels. And then I'm gonna make the bed, which is usually the first order of business for me because I saw in a YouTube video once that when you move into a new space, the first thing you should do is make the bed because whether or not you're done unpacking and moving in all your stuff, at least you have somewhere to sleep when you give up, you know? Today I didn't do that because I don't know, I've just been adjusting. Afterwards, I think I'm gonna unpack, try and find my skincare, and then go to bed. <music> lessons tomorrow so I would love to be settled in and have everything in its rightful place. Also my room is in a bit of a state right now because I was rummaging through my stuff this morning to try and find my shower product so I could take a shower. Honestly I've just had a slow morning. I woke up around 7am I would say and that honestly surprised me because last night I slept at like 1am. I think it was just me adjusting to sleeping in a new space and I was supposed to do a little bit of stuff yesterday but honestly I literally just made the bed and went to sleep. A little bit earlier, actually, I went out with my friend to the computer labs to try and register for my modules for this semester, and that was successful. I managed to do that. But yeah, today's going to be a day full of cleaning and organizing and just preparing for lessons to start. Honestly, my main motivation to do this so I don't procrastinate is the fact that I haven't eaten all day 
and it's around like 1 p.m. right now and my food is packed away so in order to get to the food I have to unpack everything else and the reward after doing this task will be that I get to eat. Honestly, I mean that's not the only reason why I'm unpacking my stuff. I can't move from here, you know. I also just want to be able to move around my room and not live in a mess, you know. I need to be able to use and access everything so I gotta unpack. I'm going to turn on Spotify, put on an upbeat playlist, and get my work done because a girl's got to eat. Wait, 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 wait. What do you like about this girl? I mean, there's like a lot of things I'd probably start with. I like the way she smiles. She got me staring for a while. Got me staring for a while. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's our conversation. She's my favorite notification. She knows how to dress for special occasions She got me thinking life could be better These songs start to feel like love letters I should tell her now what I ever It is what it is, man, whatever Whatever, yeah, whatever I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now It's whatever Keeps me close in the friend zone. Yeah, but I don't mind it too much though. Why? If my feelings don't show, say it ain't so, man. You should know that I've been saying no, but maybe you're the one I've been looking for so long. So long. She got me thinking life could be better. I'm going to get started with clothes first because I have a lot of stuff and it's kind of overwhelming. But at least if I have my clothes packed away, then I'll feel a little bit more organized. I'm telling you now, it's whatever. Whatever. Cut my eye. Whatever. Cross that line. I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, it's whatever. Make signals, can understand what she's been saying. But my mind's fickle, don't know what game I've been playing. Whatever. Is it okay? My friend nostalgia, I found you When I heard the sweet sound of the ones who I once knew so well In a voice memo from years ago We were laughing about some nonsense Oh how I miss those friends Circumstances made it so that I'll never see their faces Except for Hey guys, it's a few days later and I just wanted to end off this video by having a little chat just to spew my thoughts on being a final year student, you know, finishing uni and just have a little reflective session thinking about things I've learned along the way and sharing that advice with you. I just wanted to do a little bit of a stationary haul because I figured I didn't show you guys a lot of the things that I bought for uni. I wanted to just talk about things that have stuck out to me over the past four years yeah let's get into it honestly being in final year is kind of crazy to me because i still remember so vividly sitting in my first year dorm and leaving my family for the first time that moment where it hit me that like oh i'm here i'm alone in a new place sleeping next to a new person because i had a roommate just the fear of the unknown going into it in the beginning 
and now I'm almost on the other end of it. I'm almost done with uni and honestly it's quite anxiety inducing. I'm terrified of thought of finishing uni and post grad like what does that look like for me? I have literally no clue. I'm terrified. I'm scared. I am so anxious about it. But then at the same time, I'm just trying to remind myself that I'm still young. I'm still in my early 20s and there is so much time for me to figure my life out. Not only that, but to take things a day at a time because this is my final year. I should enjoy the experience. I just take everything as it comes. I think that's the best thing that I find for me when I'm anxious about the future is just thinking about how I should take things day by day and not just skip ahead to the future. I should just focus on the now and taking things as they come. I often think about what I'm going to do with my life and I don't have it figured out. Honestly, if you're in the same boat, <laughs> we are there together. It can be quite terrifying when everyone else around you is seemingly having their life mapped out and they know what their next five years looks like. I have no idea. Honestly, I still feel like I'm in that transition period of being a child into being an adult. Being an adult comes with planning your next five years and thinking about your goals and thinking about my future really came to the forefront when I was on industrial attachment because I was surrounded by adults who had their lives figured out and of course they're gonna have advice for you as the younger person on life and it really hit me like a ton of bricks that I'm just cruising through life right now. I have no inkling of a plan. I don't even know what my next five years looks like and I think for me it really got me thinking about being an anxious person who is often in the future and worrying about the future and like i said when i'm anxious about the future i tend to tell myself like to ground in the now and to think about everything day by day by day i had to really think about those two concepts of figuring out your future and planning your future but also not being so anxious about your future to the point where you have to remind yourself to stay grounded in the now and also not being so grounded in the now that you don't think about your future i don't know if i'm making any sense but i'm still figuring it out as of right now so the point of this whole ramble is to say that the future is scary the future scares me even just like the fact that i have to make a final year project anxiety inducing terrifying on the positive end i would say i'm excited to learn new things to see how i grow by the end of this i'm not gonna lie i've been in school for a week now and the transition has not been as smooth I've been very anxious during this transition from living at home for six months to now living in school and not living with someone else. That transition has been really hard, but I know it gets better. I'm holding on to just trusting God, trusting in his plan, and trusting that he knows my future. And so whenever I'm anxious, I literally just pray like, Jesus, take it. Take all my anxiety. He's like, just take it. And I don't want to think about it. I don't want to do anything. Just take it. And Jesus fills me with such peace. In the Bible, it says, Cast your anxieties onto me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And cast your anxieties onto the Lord, for he cares for you. That's not direct quotation, so I will put in what the actual verses say. I also will put in some more verses that tend to bring me comfort when I'm anxious and when I'm overthinking, certified overthinker over here. Looking back on the past four years in terms of lessons or advice, especially if you're an incoming freshman or even if you're in like the middle of your university or college journey or even if you're like me and you're a senior, first and foremost would be to document as much of your experience as possible and you don't have to be sharing it on the internet like I'm doing or I've been doing. I learned that of course uni has its ups and downs. It definitely takes a toll on your mental health but one thing I've learned is as human beings we tend to grasp onto the negatives more than we do the positive. If you think about your entire year, like think of 2023 for example, what do you remember more? Your low moments, your sad moments, or your happy moments? I feel like unless something makes you extremely over the top happy, you won't tend to remember it or 
even small mundane things that can spark joy in you. You won't remember that, but you're more inclined to remember the negatives. That happens to me quite often where I think my oldest time I was down in the dumps, okay? And I tend to remember those moments more than I do the positive things or the mundane things that were amazing things that happened to me or amazing things that I experienced. And so I feel like documenting your life as much as possible, you get to look back on your month or your year and remember all those positives in your life, especially when the negatives try to bring you down. A few methods that I use personally is journaling and of course taking photos and videos using your phone and also centering your mind and being like, okay, I'm in this positive moment and trying your best to commit it to your long term. Sometimes I feel like if you have your phone out all the time, you don't commit it to memory and I find that sort of grounding and centering myself into this take a mental picture right now helps you to remember those amazing things that happened to you. I tend to fall into the mentality of I have a picture of it, I don't have to remember it in my brain. I'll save that mental space for something else. But that's important, so remember it, you know? Now, journaling is such a good way of encapsulating your feelings and thoughts, as well as what happened. So I try to document the good as much as possible. I would definitely recommend you do the same if you haven't already been doing it. My next piece of advice seems like something obvious, but say yes to new experiences as much as you possibly can. More especially if your excuse for not trying something new is oh outside the comfort zone if it's a comfort zone excuse do it anyway do it scared that is one thing that i've really enjoyed implementing into my life because as i've already mentioned i can be an anxious person mostly social anxiety that's my main gripe is social anxiety and social anxiety can stop you from doing a lot of things that you enjoy later on in life or a lot of adventures you never would have gotten if you stayed scared so do it scared that's what i tell myself and i've done things even though my social anxiety was like don't even think about it and i've had experiences where i enjoyed it to the max and experiences where i didn't enjoy it so much but i still got something positive out of that experience and so i thousand percent recommend saying yes to your experiences and trying to do new things and be involved in your university and with your friends as much as possible. Even if you are absolutely terrified, <laughs> when you look back, you'll be a lot more fulfilled. You'll go on these adventures, you'll meet new people who want to be in your life for a specific purpose and it's just overall good for you. If you are an incoming freshman watching you need advice videos and someone's like, hey, try new things. I was that freshman like i heard trying new things i was like yeah 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 and did i do it no until i sat myself down and was like mm. at the end of the day those are your memories and you're going to have such positive things to look back on and even if you hated the experience at least you tried it you know you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take so even starting youtube was something that i was like i'm terrified i'm not gonna do that and i still did it scared i went on trips i participated in competitions i've met some people and yes i may not have always gotten a fully positive outcome from the experience but at the end of the day it was fun and i did it there's always something positive you can gain from the experience so try new things and say yes to new experiences as much as possible and i'm also grateful to my friends for pushing me as well to join things with them and the next piece of advice is small failures are really not that deep and if you feel one quiz it's not that deep if you feel one exam it's not that deep in terms of if you're able to make it out cut yourself some slack okay like getting a degree is not easy it's difficult it takes a toll on you physically mentally spiritually and you're not always thriving with it and so small failures really not that deep i think pick yourself back up and it's easy to dwell on your oh, i feel this and now it's over it's not over there's other ways you can make up for it you can always do better and learn from that failure i did talk about failure in extent in one of my previous study vlogs where i was writing a supplementary exam i failed it i was down in the dumps for some time of like oh no i failed what am i gonna do and it's easy to spiral in that way but remember sometimes it's not that deep and by not that deep, I don't mean don't care about it and just like leave it. But what I do mean is you 
can always make up for it and learn from it so please do that <laughs> the next piece of advice also seems pretty obvious and that's manage your time as best as you can in uni and it also relates to the trying new experiences as much as possible don't fill your time with just schoolwork only but also don't fill your time with just fun things learn time management time management is key to being successful plan your time well and if you are a procrastinator Delete those apps that are distracting you. Cut out distractions as much as possible. Try and be focused. Time management is key. Do your assignments on time. Study on time. Do your best is basically what I'm saying. It's important to manage your time well. Another piece of advice is to trust in God's timing. Realizing that you are always on time. You are never late. You are never too early. You are right where you need to be at the right time. So trust in God's timing because there's a time for everything under the heavens, you know. All things are working for your good. God has got a plan for you and he knows the plans that he has for you. plans to prosper you and not to destroy you but to give you a future. Trust in God and he's got your back always. I think that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is just trusting. Like I said, you tend to be anxious. Trusting in God will help you a lot. It helps take away that pressure off of you as well. It helps to ease your heart, to ease your mind a little bit more. So trust. In the Bible it also says that you will keep the mind of one who is dependent on you in perfect peace because it is trusting you. Something along those lines. Again, not direct quotes, but I will put the direct quotes. You are meant to be where you are and things always work out the way they are meant to work out. That is the major lessons that have stuck out to me in terms of like, reflecting on the past few years. I'm sure there's a lot more, but that's what I want to share with you guys today. Okay, let's end off this video on a more fun note and talk about one of my favorite things, which is stationery. I am such a stationery lover. I've loved stationery all my life. I also realized that earlier when I went grocery shopping, earlier in this video, I didn't film a haul. So let's haul the fun thing. Let's start off first and foremost with the more boring aspects of it, which is notebooks. First of all, I got these spiral notebooks. I just have two of them. And I, I like using this when I go to lectures. I write literally all my notes in this one notebook. And then when I come back, I can make summary notes in the other notebooks that I will show you. I like carrying one book, one pen to lectures. Well, two pens. One is an extra. But I feel like it's so much lighter, so much more portable and more convenient. Plus my notes are all in one place. Whatever messy notes I want to take down during class, I write them in here. So I just got two of these. Usually I just get one and that lasts me throughout the entire semester. And sometimes I'm not towards the end. So at that point, I'll just buy another one. And then I got the second one for my project module. I just wanted to have a separate notebook just for that because I have to do a final year project to graduate. So that starts off the notebooks. Then for my individual modules, I just got these thick notebooks. I wanted the slightly smaller one, the two choir ones. These are three choir. Three choir has 200 and 88 pages. Two choir has 192 pages. That usually isn't up for me, but I will still use these notebooks. I got one for each of my modules or classes this semester. This should last me the entire semester. I'll be doing a combination of those that I take in class, as well as extra information from the lecture slides, study guides, practice questions. I'm doing them all in these notebooks. They're thick and they're heavy. Lastly, in this category of the books, I just have this flip file. I'm going to be using this for a loose leaf paper to my test scripts that have been returned to me after they've been marked or any other mm -hmm. important information. I'm going to be keeping that in here. It's just 50 page flip file. Usually I have a binder, but I found that it was not working very well. So I opted for this. Hopefully it works. Now onto the fun stuff, which is pens and writing utensils. I have gel pens. I'm left-handed and I prefer using gel pens, especially these ones because they dry really quickly. I love a quick drying gel pen because it's smooth to write with but the quick drying aspect is very really helpful so I don't smudge the ink across the paper or smudge it onto this part of my hand and I feel like my handwriting just looks really nice with gel pens because I really like the thick bold 
lettering like a medium bold lettering with my handwriting so i have gel pens i have some that i haven't used from previous semester mostly the blue ones so i tend to just restock on the black ones most of the times because i just use those ones to write so i got three black pens and one blue pen actually this now that i'm looking at it you can tell that the ink is not as much which means i took one of the old ones that i had whenever i run out of black pens i use blue pens next i got a mechanical pencil it's really cool really professional it's like artist grade very fancy in my opinion it's just a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil and i almost didn't get this but the shop owner manager i think it was the shop owner but when i was buying my stationery they're like hey don't you want a mechanical pencil and i was like looking at my mom because my mom is the one who was paying for my stationery i was like please and she's like yeah sure so i got it and you'll notice that i just got a bunch of blue stuff because that's just the color i was feeling at the time and he made a comment like wow you really like blue I mean I do so but I'm not partial to blue. I also got the correction pen. Pretty standard, pretty required. I prefer the pen over the tape because I just feel like it lasts longer and the pens are easier to find as well. Next I also got some tape. Nothing too fancy. You always need tape so. Next I got a pack of sticky notes. It's already opened as you can see I've been using the yellow ones. Well you can't really see the yellow in this lighting but I got a four pack of sticky notes. It comes with purple, pink and green. I said you can't really tell. I chose these ones because obviously pastel colors. Love pastel colors. Speaking of pastel colors I also got a five pack of these pastel highlighters. They were cute. I needed some new highlighters. So some pastel highlighters. We have sent to the rainbow here, but did I say these are a five pack? It's a six pack of pastel highlighters. Okay, last thing I want to show you the items that I got for decor and they don't exactly count as stationery but they're fun and I want to show you anyways. So first I have this cute keychain. I also attached this mirror charm that actually I've had since high school. That's when I first had my very first bag charm keychain. I still have it and I think this is Sailor Moon behind here. I've never watched Sailor Moon so I have no idea but I think it might be. The keychain I got was this bunny lollipop lollipop i think it's an ice cream yeah but an ice cream pop and at the back you can see his butt i thought that was kind of funny and it's cute and then this is like the band not the cutest but at least the bunny is cute really enjoy decorating my room to just make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing just to add a bit of personality so i got these lego blocks figurines and this one is a purple bunny love her and then this one is i don't know if you can decide what it is but it's a person in a costume and it's a dog costume i think so like a cute little friend wearing a dog costume and these are the other options but in store i just saw this one so i got this one i think it's cute so from the options that were there didn't see any of these but I thought these were cute so I got these two and I can't wait to build them and place them around the room. I will update you when we put our little friends in future videos. Okay guys that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed back to school prepping with me. I hope that if you started or about to start with me, I wish you all the best of luck. I'm rooting for you always and I'm wishing you the best this academic year, this semester. I hope that the advice I gave you in this video made some semblance of sense and I hope it makes your lives a bit better or a bit easier. I'm excited to take you along more on my journey. I want to vlog as much as possible this semester just to document final year. Hopefully, I can document the highs, the lows, the stressful points, the happy points, and just keep those memories for myself, but also to share them with you and maybe just so that we can take each other through the semester, you know? And with that said, I would also like to 
just drop in a little announcement here that we are starting a new series on the channel to document this final year stuff. So all the final year vlogs will be a part of a series. So I will announce the name of the series when the first video goes up. I'm excited to film content here, documenting and making memories and memory keeping. I am so happy you watched till the end. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you are going into. Are you a junior, a freshman, sophomore, a senior, first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Let me know down below in the comments and comment down this emoji while you're at it. Once again, thank you so, so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!